respond. Um, well, um, again, uh, our uh, our uh, 40th anniversary celebrations is February 19th, 20th, and 21. This this, this uh, we will be teaching this seminar series uh, on uh, on from the 19th through the 20 or, um, on the 21st, uh, which is uh, again the advanced class and these are, and these topics. The day before, we'll go over basics. And Carrie, you've been in my class already on that. Um, uh, yeah. um, one thing that it does help uh, for new people is that I, I'll focus the basic class instead uh, on basic topics uh, because there are a lot of people that may need a little bit of extra time to get themselves going on the machine. So it's a more fa focused basic class. And then the advanced class uh, becomes uh, useful for uh, uh, the advanced class becomes useful for people who already know the machine and don't. Uh, and uh, our past uh, learning how to replace needles or how to tension or how to set up a design in the control panel and get it to sew. So, okay. All right. Um, so hopefully this is uh, hopefully this will answer uh, your questions if you if you have time on the twenty first to attend. Uh, that's nine thirty to five p.m. Uh, uh, February twenty first. And then in um, in following up with that. Um, with uh, HavyEMB.com, uh, where you guys actually got the link uh, for this. Um, so if we go to HavyEMB.com and go to um, the calendar, please keep checking back. Um, what, we will keep, what we'll do is I'm going to add more um, uh, trainings. Uh, I'm going to replicate this in March. Uh, now in March I've got uh, advanced training on the 17th and 18th um, in Atlantic City for those of you who might be closer to that region, um, and then um, I'll go ahead and add a training at the end of March uh, for uh, uh, for the Charlotte office too as well, and we'll do the same thing for um, any of our uh, any of the other months too. So the plan is going forward uh, one major training in the Charlotte office, and then and then a training on the road at the different locations. Um, for example, Orlando, by the way, has just been moved to September. Um, they, we've been told by the trade show venue. So this trade show is going to go away, and that means that this training will go away and will actually move to September. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, May, June, uh, July, we've got nothing planned in July, so I don't have a July uh, schedule. But uh, we'll definitely add training to July as well. So just keep checking back, and uh, we'll supplement that with webinars too as well. So, OK. Um, all right. All right, I've got a question from Kelly on Happy Link. Uh, we'll uh, I'll be helping her set that up. Um, and uh, let me go over a couple of other things that uh, that uh, people are having some problems with uh, because I know that uh, just kind of listening to recent help desk trends and what kind of questions people are having. And by the way, Steve, I don't know if you're there, but I saw you kind of pop in. Um, uh, look for a message that I'm just typing, so I'll just type the word welcome, and know that you can ask questions at any point there, and uh, let's see, okay, no problem. And uh, Steve, I don't know if you can hear, um, but if you need to join by phone, just to get every, uh, get you started here with this webinar at 312-878-3081. And as you guys know that have, keep coming back to us, uh, that number changes for every webinar. And then access code um, it also changes. I wish it was simple and we can always have it the same number. But uh, um, So just typing these, uh, this gives you some clear audio. Uh, it seems to work better than PC speakers. But I appreciate some of you muting yourselves um, uh, because we do have a lot of noise uh, sometimes. Uh, but it's OK for you guys to unmute yourselves if need be, if you need to, to kind of speak into the microphone. So no problem, guys. Um, all right, a couple of things uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, I have a lot of questions on. Uh, we covered one of them, which is oiling the machines, and we get a lot of uh, so, and that's that's been pretty popular. Another thing that um, a lot of people have questions on is also uh, 
uh, maintenance. What other maintenance beside uh, beside uh, oiling your machine do you do? And I'd say I classify that generally just under cleaning. So, um, and what I would do is just kind of um, just kind of going to let's go ahead and bring up a visual uh, of my training workbooks here. Is um, uh, this is a great view here, and you guys can get these from HappyMB.com on the web, um, on the uh, on the uh, education page. Um, keep the the rotary hook area clean, and this is a good cutaway of what happens when you remove the uh, uh, the the, um, the sewing plate. Um, you can see the structure underneath. Um, this is the moving knife here, which swivels out. Uh, this is the fixed knife here. Um, let me see if I can get a better cursor for you guys, uh, but. So this is the fixed knife right here, um, and then this is the moving knife. Um, clean out any buildup under here, because uh, it will build up over time. If you've never removed the, uh, the sewing plate, um, no matter which happy machine you have, um, it all pretty much looks like this. Um, and you'll get a buildup of lint here over time, even clean lint, because the new garments have a lot of lint. Um, and any, any buildup of threads. Um, you'll also see a small spring underneath here. Um, actually, you can see it right here. This is called the bobbin holder assembly. Um, any thread that's in here will prevent the bobbin from being held uh, properly um, when it's not in use, for example. Um, swivel open the knife if you can. If you have the 15 needle machine, that means you have to go into the little maintenance mode, and then the machine will swivel it open and hold it open for you if need be. If you have a Voyager machine, you can actually take this cover off and swivel this open with some effort with your own hands and clean that out, and maybe put a very thin film of oil on this to keep it from rusting. Um, to clean up the buildup, the, uh, the sticky buildup of oil and uh, uh, other solvents, and of course, uh, even spray adhesives can sometimes build up here, and of course, anything that sticks to that. Um, you can either use um, the uh, you can use the the wash away spray. They call it hook wash um, that you can get from TexMacDirect.com, um, or if or in a pinch, you can just use cotton a cotton ball and some rubbing alcohol or isopropanol alcohol, and just turn the turn the main shaft at the back. Um, or on the Voyager, this is light enough, you can actually rotate this by hand and clean all the aspects of the hook. And then once you're done with the alcohol, um, go ahead and re-oil, uh, dry it out really nicely, and then go ahead and re-oil the hook. You, you um, oil the hook here, and then also if you get a chance to get a thin film of oil on a paper towel and just kind of rub the outside edges on it too, so, um, of the uh, just to kind of protect all your metal surfaces, but clean with solvent such as alcohol or your hook wash, all these surfaces here, and then go ahead and uh, uh, apply a fresh coat of oil, uh, especially here in the in this little gutter, uh, to oil the race of the bobbin case, which is the ridge that the outer uh, hook uh, rotates around where the metal-to-metal -metal contact happens. So uh, that's a big deal, guys, um, uh, keeping that clean. It will reduce thread breaks uh, over time. Okay. Uh, any questions, uh, further questions on maintenance uh, as regarding uh, uh, general upkeep of the happy machines? Because we do have, we, we seem to have had a lot of questions lately on that. Okay. Steve, I don't know if you're there. I think you kind of beeped in. Uh, can you hear me clearly? I hear you. Okay. Oh, great, great, great. Okay. I have right. never I sort of stumbled in. This is great. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool, and um, we actually are going to be increasing the frequency in which we have these, and um, and uh, just to let you guys know, uh, most of you are aware we do record these uh, in video, so I don't fully identify people on here for privacy's sake, but just to let you guys know that uh, we are, uh, oh, this is being re recorded, my, the video of, uh, of my screen here. This is normally happening on, live on camera, but um, uh, just temporarily, and again, we apologize that we had some PC problems, uh, but uh, the next one scheduled will be uh, live on camera. So, um, oh, actually, the next one will, will be digitizing, but um, every time we do embroidery machines, generally we go live so that we can actually tear down the machines, uh, share things out. Um, okay, I'm going to add one more thing in here that uh, I know that, uh, Carrie, you have uh, the 15 needle. Steve, you've got the 15 needle. Um, and Kelly, I see your question, so I'm going to get back to you on that. 
Um, with the 15 needle machine, um, it's got a unique cap driver, and uh, and uh, if you need to sew on caps, we see a lot of people that are having problems with uh, the sewing on caps with their 15, and when they but when they get it, all the problems uh, go away. So I want you all to be aware of some key alignment issues when you're installing the cap sewing device on the machine. So as you can see from our, my little handout here on the education page, you want to remove the uh, the arms on either side. And you can see me removing the right side arms. That's actually my hand because I don't have a budget to uh, hire models to do this. But uh, basically take your three millimeter hex wrench and just turn it, maybe three, loosen it by a three quarter turn or, or just enough so that you can now pull the arm off. Do that to the left and the right side. Now here's where it gets tricky. Okay, you want, here's your cap driver here and what you want to do is slide it over the arm um, over the sewing arm like this. And so far this is identical to, almost identical to the Voyager. You're sliding your cap driver over the square shaped arm and sliding it back against the pantograph system here. And, and this, is where, um, this is where it gets a little bit tough. Um, you want to align the slots, um, and this is taken from the manual here. You want to, there's uh, two little uh, hex screws here, on, and they go into the smaller slots. And on the newer machines, there's actually a sticker here, um, um, a yellow sticker that with symbols for caps and, and wide and super wide. So Steve, with yours, is kind of, I don't know if yours had the sticker, but uh, the new one coming out to you will have a sticker. Um, and then also, uh, when you're lining that up, there are two lower L-shaped brackets on the bottom, and you can kind of see that here, is this L-shaped bracket right here. And um, the, where problem, people are having problems is this L-shaped bracket fits over this lower plate. And in the next uh, photo here that I kind of took, here's your screw head alignment, and here's your uh, hex screw head alignment and the thumb screw alignment to the slots, but below that, you can see that the the L-shaped bracket from below slides over top of the the plate on the X carriage. But what's most important is that people are tightening. The wrong thing that people are doing is tightening the screw down when it looks like this. What you really want to do is have it flush. I know that doesn't show flush very well, but this L-shaped bracket has to go flush. And this is the right side, so you want to do the other side too. And and that one will be facing off to the left. So make sure that your L-shaped bracket are flush and tightened down. Um, what that does is that, that that helps angle the cap driver a little bit downwards so that it's holding the, the, uh, the cap a little bit tighter against the needle plate. And also if you're not flush, uh, what can happen is some of these alignment screws, especially here, you can see the, uh, the screw here. And that, Again, let me see if I can't change my pointer. Um, so that you all can see what I'm pointing to easily. All right, here's a good one. Um, the the screw head from the pantograph behind it can sometimes hit the screw head of the uh, of the uh, of the of the thumb screw here, and they can run up against each other, especially on the first generation um, touchscreen 15 needles. And what they've done on the second gen is they've just shortened the screw uh, enough, but um, you won't have the issue no matter which one you have if you make sure your plates are flush. Okay, so uh, that's a big deal. Another thing that people are doing, and this is both for Voyager and 15 needle machines, um, any happy machine really, is that this curved plate that you're seeing here um, is de designed to help the um, the hat um, uh, curve and arc properly over the sewing plate. But um, what people are having problems with, if you're seeing, uh, so especially if you're seeing distortion along the top of the sew out, you can see that this plate has two screw heads here. It's a multi-position plate. And this curved plate um, on some machines are is out, oriented out further here to the front so that you can't actually see the, the base plate underneath it. So do a double check of your cap driver. No matter who's, if you've got your Voyager, the 7 needle or the 12, uh, 7 needle, 12 or 15 or a multi-head, and make sure this guide plate is in the most recessed position towards the uh, towards the back of the machine. So to do that, remove these two screw heads and these screws. And you'll see behind them that about five holes here that the, uh, this plate can go into. Put them in the rearmost holes, and that really really can help out um, um, in improving your sewing quality on ball caps. So uh, uh, I know that's been a, a question lately at the help desk, so I wanted to go ahead and pass that on.
Okay, and then I've got a question is where do you go back to see the videos from the class? And uh, the, the way to do that, we kind of keep it, um, right now we're making it easy by letting you just kind of go to your, uh, the, the calendar, the events calendar, and if you go to, for example, I had a, a webinar on January 23rd, click here and you'll see a recording of the class. And um, be aware, this is not streaming, this is a true download, so when you click on it, it'll download the entire thing to your uh, computer, which you're welcome to have, and then go ahead and just watch uh, the video. So that uh, that helps in case people miss it. Uh, like the gentleman just left uh, shot me a quick note that uh, he won't be able to see the rest of the class, so um, he's uh, he can uh, see this a little bit later. So um, good question, Kelly. And um, what we'll do for you again is that right after this, right after we sign off together, I'll go ahead and help you with your Happy Link installation, get you get you going on that. So sorry that you've been waiting a little bit, but. Uh, this is, a, we try to use this forum too as a chance for people that are having serious problems or issues to go ahead and have a, a reach out to me in the tech department and we'll get your uh, machine issues taken care of. Okay, the floor is open for questions. Uh, uh, we're a little bit past um, time, but if you have a little bit of time, uh, we don't mind going over in case that you guys do have any questions. Um, so a small group here, it's not too bad. Uh, so. Uh, Billy, if you have any questions, Carrie, Kelly, uh, Marie, or Steve, um, the floor is open if you, anybody has anything right now. I have a question. Sure. So what I, I never noticed, I, I really don't have any problems with the hats anymore, but I never knew about those that adjustment. So when you take off those two screws, you take them all the way off and adjust it. You don't loosen it and slide it, right? When you're talking about the two screws that you're seeing here? Right yeah, here. you just take right, them yes. all the way out. You have to take them all the way out, and they're short. And the other okay. thing, too, is that um, um, I think they're easy to strip, so make sure you put plenty of pressure on the screwdriver in them to get them to turn and break loose, because I don't think they're designed to to move um, a lot. So yeah, put them to the... like in the middle, it looks like. Yes, yeah. When they come, they're in the middle. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. So, Thank you. Yeah, you know, you're welcome. And um, an another thing, too, is on the update of the machine itself, um, one thing that you missed, Stephen, and we'll go over again because I just thought of a new update to the to the machine. That um, So there's a there's a new list of updates uh, on the machine that uh, Happy's coming out with. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here because I started my list. So new touchscreen updates. It's not come out yet, um, so we got a sneak tease preview, and I thought I was able to actually roll this out to you guys, but it's not quite there yet. Um, so you can see some cool things. You can batch read a USB stick, which is really nice. So That's what I've been waiting to do. Yeah, you. so with the update, you'll be able to do it. So I think the machine going out to you will not have it yet, because none of us have it yet. Oh, so we haven't cool. taken Yeah, Yeah, and that's really slick. You can basically read everything. There's 20 subdirectories now, and you can rename all of them. So, um, and you can have it read directly into a subdirectory rather than it dump into the main directory, and then you got to move it later, which is really nice. So, um, that's one of the things. Um, and uh, oh, and also with the new update, the cap sewing field goes uh, extends more goes to 95 millimeters high. That's really dangerous because the real sewing field of, a, of any um, uh, embroidery machine um, is, uh, let me see, let me show you guys this here, is the limit of your, the cap itself. So one of the illustrations that I provide is, um, is uh, an illustration of the cap. Your sewable area is going to be the, the mostly vertical surface uh, of the front. So where it starts to fall off, like this zone here in the red, um, it's that part's going to be pushing up against the sewing plate when the needle's over top of it. So you're going to get all kinds of distortion. So even though your machine, when you download the update, especially Carrie and Steve, and of course anybody with a touchscreen machine, um, it, that sewing field now goes up this high, but you can't, still can't use it if your hat's not shaped uh, for that. So that may be useful for, let's say, if you're sewing on um, top hats, stovepipe hats. That actually opens all kinds of um, cool little decorational possibilities because um, 
You can do taller cowboy hats, uh, probably. Um, and I'm saying this, of course, try and test it yourself at your locations. Uh, or stovepipe hats, and you can do you know decorating uh, on that as, as a creative possibility. But either way, you can do taller hats now because of the new update. And this is across the board for uh, all touchscreen happy machines. Okay, so sometimes sometimes I cheat and I just pr pretend I'm using a bigger frame. Exactly, it's dangerous <laughs> too, I guess. It's dangerous <laughs> too, and I, I do want to share that with everybody because um, these these are um, these are uh, commercial machines, which means that you it's a um, they're a little bit open for you to run them in ways that will suit your shop. So um, uh, let me uh, kind of bring this up here is. Uh, on the uh, so kind of in the control panel trainer here, if we go to uh, uh, normally with a 15 needle machine or any machine, uh, any happy machine, you want to tell it to go into cap mode. So in the 15 needle machine to go into cap mode, go to your hoop selector, then go to your hoop category, and then choose cap mode, and that will put this in cap mode, and that limits the sewing area. But like what Steve's doing, and 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 um, and I readily admit we do this for as need be. Is instead put it in a bigger hoop area, and then you've got a larger sewing field. The and the machine won't slow down. It'll stay at 1,200 stitches a minute max if you want to, so you can go a little bit faster. But um, just I would say take all precaution when you do it. But there are people who do it. They get a little bit more production out of their their caps, or are able to sew on areas that they normally otherwise couldn't sew. The, uh, the one thing that I would recommend, though, and this is, goes for anybody, any happy owner here, is that pay attention to the, um, to the bottom of the cap where the, the brim is. Your true limitation on the bottom is where the elbow of the presser foot starts hitting against the metal band. So you can see in this, uh, this uh, image here that this is your sewable area. If you have a Voyager, that's 11 and a half, and a half, and a half inches wide. If you have a 15-needle machine, uh, then um, it's going to be 14.1 inches wide, um, but they all bottom out at the same point. You can go out just under half an inch uh, uh, from the bill. You can get a little bit closer with the larger 15 needle machines, but your your stopping point. So if you decide to go to a more unlimited field by not telling it it's in cap mode, um, you won't do a tra do a trace. Bring your pre your needle to the bottom of the sewing field of your design. And drop the needle if you can, and then see if it's going to hit against the uh, the metal band of the cap frame. So pretty good point, Steve, and um, and we welcome people to do it with caution um, if it gives you any kind of benefit. Okay, everybody. Uh, again, as always, the floor is open for questions. We've got some good ones here. Uh, that's why I love asking. Uh, for questions to be kind of thrown out there um, that uh, uh, gets us into other things besides the planned topics. So, so if anyone's asking a question, I could hear it. Also, is that right? Right. Exactly. Now, some people are on audio. Some people are on telephone and microphone and speaker. And some people, like, uh, let's say there's a, a lady named Maria that comes here on our list. I think she's currently here. She can. Um, she often just chooses to do the uh, the chat interface only, which is fine. Um, maybe it's a little bit quieter to her or anybody else. Um, it's really whatever you're comfortable with. So uh, okay. we're happy to offer both uh, methods to answer questions. And I do keep a chat log of uh, what people ask. Um, now that's kind of private, but if anybody's comes emails me and asks, hey, somebody asked about this question. Um, can you uh, give me some kind of reference we can provide it? And of course, what we're doing here uh, is recordable so that you can, uh, is recorded so you guys can see what we talked about today. And just to let you guys know, um, we will keep official policies to keep only the last webinar recorded, but we are not erasing any of these. Eventually, we're going to create a webinar uh, we're going to create a webinar uh, um, archive or library that you can reference and click into. And uh, I'm going to try and put a 
general topic line as to what that webinar covers so that you can don't have to listen through everyone to maybe get get to a particular topic. Okay, and then going forward, because uh, we enjoy you guys coming out and asking these questions, it gives us useful feedback. Um, I would say uh, check back from time to time on happyeme.com. I believe I only have one more webinar scheduled after this, but um, my directive is to go and add a lot more. So we're looking at, um, uh, so right now we're looking at a kind of a crazy uh, March. So I've been a little bit light on webinars. Um, February 13th will be our next one, which will be next week, and that'll be on digitizing with Stitch and So. Um, we, do, we don't have to talk about Stitch and So. We do respect that a lot of customers have other brands of software. Um, we, and we, so we do speak generally in terms of uh, digitizing principles. Um, but after that, uh, look for these, uh, color code these, so anytime you see this light green, you can see I don't have any more light green the rest of the year, but that's going to change. I'll go and add more in. And then, um, and uh, so that you guys can plan ahead of time. Uh, or if need be, if you miss them again, um, you can see the green field again, like the January 23rd. And the, uh, the January 9th recordings, is uh, they're up here. And uh, even if we take some of these off, we'll go and move them to an archive page. So is this, since there's no other questions, is this a bad to a good time to ask you a question I may have left you a message on about the uh, one go ahead. Okay. One point frame. Sure. Okay. Let's yeah. go ahead and yeah, I, talk about the one. Point I was frame. about to. I was about to order it. Thank you for the video. Okay. But okay. I'm a little confused because I called and, and they seem to recommend that I get that other hundred dollar piece, and I'm not sure why. Do you know what the hundred dollar piece is that you're talking about? Uh, it's the uh, point something. I can't ask, access my computer now, but it's it's the I guess it's so you can hoop. Oh, I guess it's so you can hoop. Um, I see your. This is amazing how you can do this. Uh, it, it's, it's really kind of nice that we can do it. I'm going to try and see cool. if. Uh, um, yeah, just go to the frame. I'll show you. All right, and then let's see. I don't even know. You guys probably know this better than the I happy do. Happy pocket let's, frame. There you go. Happy pocket. All right. Frame. I keep trying to click on my computer, but. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's true. So they're recommending that you get, uh, I think I know what you're talking about, this thing right here, maybe? Yeah, right. Is that you know, so I, I can hoop it while it's on the thing that I have nailed down? I think what this is for is for your cap stretcher. You can remove the, uh, the cap stretcher normally has, um, yeah, the cap stretcher normally has a large barrel around it. Um, so if you use this to ho if you're going to use the cap stretcher to hoop this, then you can put this on here. Now in practice, so in other words, this is for hooping on this uh, uh, off the machine. But oh, okay. I I didn't even I don't I didn't, I didn't even use it. I, I'm vaguely aware that this is this is there. So okay. there may be some applications where you'll use it, especially probably in high volume. But in 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 practice, I've been able to hoop this direct, hoop a lot of items directly on the machine without even having to worry about them um, going to the cap stretcher. So I would say after you just took off those four screws, right? right? That yeah. long piece. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. So as so everybody, this one point frame is really good. Steve's brought up a point. He and I have been working on a project for quite a while <clears throat> to see if um, if that project will will use this frame, which is looks like it's two hundred ninety nine each, and um, this. <laughs> it's on TextMacDirect.com, but um, what you're seeing here, and um, it's not very clear art, but the guide plate that we're talking, we were talking about earlier with caps, you want to remove this because the guide plate takes up a lot of room. And then when you um, when you remove that, then you can mount this one point frame on, and you can see there's nothing um, stretching around the uh, around the bobbin case door and the needle plate so that you can get really small items. And uh, Steve's got a really small tubular item that uh, it's a, uh, a wristband. And um, even the small wristband will stretch around it. Um, it gave us a little bit of problems, but otherwise it's a really tiny item that you normally shouldn't be able to do with a, uh, an embroidery machine like this. But uh, that one point frame really uh, makes that possible. So thanks for bringing that up. That's a, that's a example of what the machine can do with uh, some of these special attachments like the one point frame. Great, thank you. 
So this is a small one-point frame. When it's open, you can see it's the, the usable um, window here is this. It looks really thin, but the metal is actually really strong. It's a lot tougher than I can't bend it with my wrist unless I actually get a tool to bend it. So it's pretty strong, even though it's really thin walls. And the thin walls of that window make it possible to get really, get really actually small um, tubular items over that uh, sewing arm. So good question. And just to let you know, too, um, even though we have all kinds of other hooping aids, such as the hoop tech clamping system with really small windows, we actually compared um, all of those windows uh, with this. And this provides the smallest profile window. Um, so currently, as of today, um, that is the smallest window that you can get if you need to get a really tiny tubular item. And then you can try crazy things like um, polo sleeve cuffs with very little problem. Um, uh, um, collars, things like that. Again, uh, and pockets that are uh, directly on the pocket. We recommend not going any smaller than four and a half inches if you want trouble uh, free sewing on pockets. Okay, hey everybody, thank you for the questions. Um, what I'm going to do as usual with the end of the class is I'm going to call, uh, make a general last call for questions. And uh, as I'm kind of tying up here, I'll just kind of leave the line open. Um, so the, I may be quiet here if I'm not ta if uh, nobody's asking questions. But uh, it's currently um, it's currently uh, 18 after whatever location you're at. And so I'll go ahead and end the webinar at 25 after um, if there are no no further questions. Um, but otherwise, the line's open in case you guys think of anything else. And uh, Kelly, like I said, I'll hook up with you afterwards, uh, and we'll get that uh, happy link uh, resolved. Um, some of you, I've got uh, uh, pending uh, jobs for you, Steve. I know you're looking for some pictures from us uh, for the one point frame sew out, so that's another thing. Um, and anybody else that have, has any uh, any questions, uh, if, uh, any outstanding issues that uh, that we're working on for you, uh, let me know too as well. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad I found you. I have a customer calling me, so I will uh, leave here. Okay. Well, have a great day, Steve. Thanks for okay. stopping. Thank, thanks for all the info, Renee. All right. No problem, sir. Renee, I need to get from my thread catcher that I, I since I lost one on the floor, I can't find it. So okay. Find it okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Let me go ahead and put you on the list to. Uh, uh, I'll connect you with the parts department here afterwards. Um, do you are you able to shoot a, cell, a quick cell phone picture of uh, where that uh, screw came out of? You're saying that you've lost a screw, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And yeah, sometimes, I, sometimes we'll um, if it's a common uh, screw size, we can give you the uh, we can give you the information about it. If you want to go to a lo local store and pick one up. Uh, and of course, if it's unique, then we'll at least get you a, get you a source from us so you can get your screw replaced. Okay. Okay. And don't forget about the Loctite too. And in this extreme case, we generally don't want to put Loctite where you don't need to. But in the case of the oil and everything, um, if you are able to get to the plate there where that catcher is, um, then also clean that up with maybe a little bit of alcohol too. Get rid of the oil that's on the threads of the screws. Good idea. Okay. Okay, so I'll go take a picture of that while you um, get ready to transfer me over to them. Okay, well, I can't transfer you from here, but uh, oh. we've got your account. Um, so uh, what we can do is uh, I'll contact you also as, as well afterwards. Or actually, I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Parts call you, Carrie, so uh, okay. um, so that uh, so that um, you can get connected with uh, somebody who can supply those screws for you. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, Good no time. problem, Carrie. Okay, that's great, Billy. I'm uh, glad you were able to get stuff out of uh, today. So uh, thank you for coming today, too.